to know who's on. Come on, give me your names. Give me where you're calling from. Come on, where are you from? Are you from the USA? Are you from the UK? Are you from Australia? Are you from Melbourne? Are you from the Central Coast like me? Come on, guys, pop it in there. Let's see you down there. Let's see you. And then I will tell you how to grow your salon with three easy, easy steps. Easy, easy peasy. Come on, give us some love. Need to know that you're there. Do I be talking to myself now, do I? Hey, awesome. UK, good on you, Louisa. Hey, Natasha, I know where you're from. Geelong, hello, Geelong. How are you going down there? Um, yeah, uh, Vaughn, UK, um, Austria. Wow, do you mean Austria or Australia? Chris, I think it is Austria. I'm not sure where you're going. Come on, guys. I know you're here now. That's awesome. Caroline, how are you? How are you doing? Geelong, good on you again. All right, three, three easy things. Now I know you're here. Hey, Billy. Look at the hat, mate. Look at the hat. Uh, Gypsy Land Victoria. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. You hear her. Hey, mate. So easy. Hey, Vienna. Okay, Chris. Good on you. Um, hey, one of them things. Let's do it. Um, okay, cool. Three easy steps to grow your business. Now, this will work in most businesses. Um, awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Austrian Europe. Yeah, Chris, I know where you are. Awesome. Okay, easy, easy steps. So if you want to follow this nice and easy, I don't think I have a colored pen that I'd love to use, but we're just going to have to make sure we go through there. Is it a bad hair day? Hey, it sort of is a bad hair day. There's a guy who's online with us now, messaged me two minutes before and said, hey, Rich, put a hat on to honor me. So there you go. The hat is on to honor him, to honor Billy. Simple as that. Something really small. Didn't make any difference. Just go and grab it. Okay how to grow your business and really what to concentrate on to make it do it. Let's just start really, really basic here. I believe me, Richard, this is what I think all my salon life, I got told this many years ago, that we need to have 10 forms of marketing. Um, that's it, 10 forms of marketing, that's all we need. I'm finding a little bit of hot suit here though. It has to come off. I have to feel like it's, I feel a bit strange. But anyway, here we go. Okay, 10 forms of marketing. If you do not have 10 forms of marketing, you need to do that. Now, we, we talk about passive and we talk about interaction. You need 10 forms. That could be your signage. That could be your business cards. That could be your website. That could literally be anything. How busy you are at the moment depends on how much you spend. If you're full, if you're chockers, if you're busy, you pull back, but you still keep the 10 going. You then organically make things happen. If then you start to realize you need a new, new uh, staff member that comes on board or you've got an apprentice that's moving up or you really just want to grow, you then move into hyperactive. We call that that you're physically going out there to grab them. I talk about the three differences. One, just active means that you're going out there and you're going to prod someone in the back and go, hey, look at me. That's active, right? Passive means it's on autopilot. Passive means it's just like, hey, have you seen me? We're pretty good. Hey, that's passive, you know, and then it's hyperactive. You're going to give them a kick, a slap, whatever it takes to get their attention. You're going to grab them outside the salon and you're going to drag them in to have their hair done for free even. So you need the three forms 10 times nonstop to keep going. What you need to do through here is when you write each 10 things down, you now need to know when you check the clients walk inside that door. When they come into your salon, you hopefully know exactly where they're coming from. You need to know this. So, for example, I'm going to just do it. Let's say this is Facebook. We can put that down as Insta. I might put that down as the signage. I might put this down as referral because we're going to have a referral. I might put here because I'm going to network with the people around me. I might put, for example, I have a window display. I have a big signage that's an A board. Ten things, the forms of advertising that you're going to do to get out there and grab people. I didn't put Twitter down. Let's, let's not forget Twitter in the UK. It's pretty big in the UK, pretty small over here. So, for example, ten forms. Now, what you need to know is which one of these are working and which one of these are not. Just for argument's sake, we're going to pretend this blue pen is green. And if you know you're getting clients from Facebook, color it in. If they're coming in from Twitter, color it in. Right? If they're coming in from your networking, color it in. Now, you know you've got three streams that are actively working. If you're spending money, for example, uh, on your window display and it's not working, color that in red. It's dead. Color it in, in red. It's dead. Okay. And then, for example, I do have one here. Let's say you've got something that's giving you certain results like your signage. 
we're going to colour that in orange. You know, remember that's green, by the way. It's a traffic light, simple as that. So level one, you've got to get a steady stream of people. If you're in your salon and you're the busiest person working there and all your staff are in the back room having a laugh, enjoying themselves, having a fag, having a coffee, whatever it may be, and you're working like a dog, many, many years, it took me years to get this. It's simple, I'm telling you now, in three simple steps. Like, listen, you cannot be the busiest person in the salon. Your job, hey Nadine, your job is to bring people into the salon for your staff to actually look after. Right, you bring them in. This one, nice and nice and easy. You need to, we're going to break this up into a few sections because you have here stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. This is your service area that you're going to woo them, wow them, fantastic, make them brilliant. So let's just say, I'm going to talk in hairdressing terms here. We're going to put the big fat G down for greeting, how to greet your client. Next one, we're going to do the C, consultation, get a good consultation going on. Then we're going to have, for example, the B. We all know the basin area is fantastic. We do that. Then here, we're going to actually put the W for that's what they've come in for. They've come in for a color. They've come in for a cut. They've come in for something. And then we're going to go for the B, Y, E, the goodbye. Right? These are the stages of the salon journey, the client that's come into your salon. So we now are tracking two things. Right? We are tracking A. Where my clients are coming from, they're dropping down into here. So we know we've got some greens, they're coming in. When they're here, I want you to look at each element of your business and which one is lacking. And again, if you know at one stage is doing really, really well, so if you know your greeting is fantastic, quite simple. Again, remember blue is green. You green it. It's as simple as that. You now know that your, your goodbye, your rebookings, everything you do in your salon is actually winning. That's a good. That's a good thing. Now, let's say you get some consultations and email, get a few complaints or a few comebacks or a few um, colors that aren't really working too well. You've got to imagine that this area here, your consultation is where it's lacking. If your retail's down, your consultation is where it's lacking. Make it bloody red, big as. That means you need to work on it. Then you look at this color code. Remember, what's green is working. So you know they're coming in. You know they're being looked after at the back end just as they go in. You're on to a winner. This is really, no matter what we want to talk about it, this is where the money is. Step one. You need to master what's working in your salon and what's not. We're visual. Let's just do a three-step look. It's really easy. Get some colored pens. Color them in. Do it monthly. We had 15 new clients. Where do they come from? You drop them into these sections that you're monitoring. Color them in and go, okay, I can now see what's working. I can see what's failing. Pretty easy. Next stage, come down. This is the wow factor. This is when you're telling the story to get clients to come to you, when you're telling them, hey, come to me because my music's fantastic, my music's brilliant. Picture this. This is your nightclub, okay, your nightclub. And you're trying to get people in that like nice, good 80s music. When they come in, you've got to give them 80s music. Hey, there's no point shoving the odd 90 in. They didn't come for that. So your salon, why did they come? You, this is where the money is. This is good old fashioned, you know, de over delivering, looking after people. This is where it is. So you now know, hey, I know what's working and what's not. I know where to spend my time. I know where to throw more money. Here's a clear clue. Throw more money on what's working, tweak on what's not. Don't throw more money on what's not working to make it work. You know it's working. Look at it. Copy it. Don't trade it. Don't you? Milk it until it breaks again. It's as easy as that. Drop it down into this section here. I'm now looking at my salon. Each client touch point as they go around. The greetings when they come in first thing. That's the wow fact. Did you know, just so did you know, the first 20 seconds when someone walks through that door, that's when they make their mind up if they're coming back. The first 20 seconds. Big eyes, big smile, shake their hand, touch the soft point between the elbow and their shoulder, wherever it is, and you greet them like they're the long lost relative from Australia. That's what you do. And you greet them because that's where the money is. And then you move them along. You might give them some cappuccinos or a latte or whatever you do in your salon with a little nibbly biscuit and you get them to the consultation area. And then at the consultation area, you'll actually woo them with how your knowledge. This is where you get to show off your knowledge, how good you actually are. You've got at this stage, at the consultation stage, a billion, billion, billion things that they can have done. 
we know in hairdressing it's only four things they can have done really but anyway four things out of a billion your job is like a detective what's your problem what annoys you what can you do what can't you do you've got to narrow it all down and you look at their face shape and you look at the skin tone and you choose something that's going to make them look prettier as they leave easy same in beauty by the way you you break down all their their, their skin tones or what their, their skin's greasy or their skin's dry or etc etc the consultation you've got to win them over that is where your retail is that is where the client's going to rebook. That is where you're going to woo them. You then move them on to the experience. You now, if they've got them in, you've made them feel nice and cozy and warm, like a nice pair of slippers. You then move them into the next stage. They're here, right? They're in this section. You've showed them how good you are. You've now proved it. The rest of it here is just the, the experience. You then take them to the base and you give them the best head massage they've ever had in their life or the best hand massage if you're doing beauty, whatever it may be. You then start backing up what you've said. And you've got to realize which one's working and which one's not. Now, we know when we go to the basin area, people do this way, your little upsell comes in, your little treatments to make some money. Are you making enough treatments? I'm going to tell you a little secret here, guys. My treatments were $30 to $50. That's what I did for a treatment. It took me 35 seconds to do at the basin. It cost me 75 cents to do it. Think of the think of the difference. 75 cents, less than a minute. I made $50 on it. Upsell. I got 30% of my clients. I did 100 clients a week. 30 of them at 30 to $50 paid me for something that was really quite small. Think about it. Because it actually worked. I didn't sell something that didn't work. I didn't rob them. But it's the upsell. It's part of the experience. If I come somewhere and I want, I want the full experience. I don't want half the experience. If you aren't selling enough treatments, you're amber. You may be red. Work on this. These are the numbers you need to know. Each element here will tell you a story of how good your salon is. By the way, if you're over a year old and you needing clients and you're struggling and you're not growing that much, Something is broken in this criteria here and here. These both need to work continually. Okay, number three. I said it was three simple steps, easy as. This one here, I'm going to put this straight across because there's other elements we can put in here. I'm going to put just three, but I'm going to write the whole lot in. Keep. Most salons lose 20% of clients from the back door. That means that eventually you didn't do this very well or they've just moved on, et cetera, et cetera. Your job is to look at this and go, right, are my clients dragging it out between appointments? When I had a salon and it went from 8.2 weeks to 9.2 weeks, that cost me 120,000 a year. That's the difference by just dragging it out one week. Your job on number three is to make sure they come in more regular. Are your rebooks working? You've got to send email letters, guys. You've got to keep in touch with these people. You've got to make sure that you're wooing them to come in. This section here is a bit of work for you guys. It's designing. We have four seasons in the year. Do four specials for the year, four offers for the year. Now, we all know fashion and style comes from Italy. It travels around the world, through the UK, over to New York and over here to Australia. Five years later here in Australia, by the way, guys. we still got mohawks. No, seriously, don't really. But when it comes down to it, um, truthfully, your job is to make sure you get to keep these people. So you work on the back end. You get an automated system with your computer system. Has your software actually got a system where you can just sit and forget and pull these people back? It's worth hundreds of thousands to you. Hundreds of thousands. It literally is. You can get your clients back one week earlier. You don't need literally as many clients as you think you need. If your database isn't, is, is quite big and everyone's spread out because you're doing them once or twice a year, what's the point of that? Bring them back in. It's as simple as that. Three easy steps. So what you look at is simple as this. Are the, are the clients dragging it out? Are you losing clients? And can you, on this one here, which is really beautiful, it's really quite straight, I'm going to put an M if you remember what this one, multiple services. If your client has multiple services in your salon, they are more loyal. If they have three or more services, the chance of them leaving you is next to none. More chances of you going to the moon. It's crazy. Think about it. When it comes down to it, the more services that you have, the less you lose them. And this keep, this strategy is what you do is you pull them back in. If you know your clients have cut and blow, cut and blow, cut and blow, and they don't want color, think of what else you can give them. Send them an email, talk to them, send them a text, talk to them. Pretty easy. Three, 
basic, basic steps to grow your business. You can do it color coded like this every month. Write it down. Write your percentages. Write your numbers. Know where you're at. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey guys, love your thoughts on this. Love your thoughts on this. Really simple, really easy. Remember, just so you remember, blue is green. I don't have any green. It's blue. It's just traffic lights. Looking at that every month, I go, right, I know what's working. Beautiful. Do you know what's really good? If this one's working over here, Facebook, and you're spending $10 a week, spend 20 a week, you'll get twice as many in. Think about it. If it's not working, if Facebook's red, then you've got to spend some time working at it. What numbers did you expect Facebook to get in? So for example, if we just go over here a section, we're just going to take one element from here, which is just your Facebook box. You need to know like how much you're going to spend on this. I'm going to put two here because both of you from the UK and oh, Austria would be an E. I'm sure it would be. So there you go. Got you all in there. So what you need to figure out really simple is how much am I going to spend and what was I expecting to get back out of that? Now, listen, just so you know, guys, likes don't pay your bills. Reactions don't pay your bills. Phone calls, booking in, pays your bills, and they only come in when there's problems. We've got to dig deep into this. That's where you've got to work. But it's simple. You need to have an idea of, hey, this is where I stand. This is what needs work. This is what's broken. And if you are the busiest person in the salon, it's wrong. I'm going to tell you my, my pain point, just so you know. Many, many years ago, I had this salon in the UK, and it was, it was doing well. It was pumping. I was doing fantastic because I'm really good, believe it or not. I was good at what I did. I was so busy, my staff in the back room, having a laugh, having a fag in them days of smoking in the back room, you know, having a coffee. I'm working like a dog. I started at nine. I'm still running late. They're just sitting there thinking, is he finished yet so we can go home? That's the way it was every day. I needed more money. I wanted to grow. So guess what I did? Guess what the Muppet did? I worked harder. I worked six days a week and did all my marketing on a Sunday. Muppet. That's what I did. I worked harder and harder and harder to try and get myself busier and busier and busier to make money. doesn't work doesn't work your job is to find out how busy you can get for your team and work on this good old-fashioned this is you guys all miss this out you forget that people need to be wooed people need that they come to you like over here in Australia we have a place where I can go and get a haircut for $22 I would never go there I'm gonna explain why I want to be looked after you have two people that, that salon's doing really well but I'm a, I'm a different person my friend and my son loves going to the local pub. It's two steaks for one, but you've got to cook it yourself. If I'm going out for a meal, I want to be waited on. I don't want to shuffle around like I'm in a canteen. That's just me. There's choices, there's different things. So when I have a salon and when I go to a salon, I want to be looked after on every element. Look at every little element of your business. There's only five stages, by the way, guys. You know, think about it. It's five little stages for you to actually master. Small as. Simple and small. You have now got this nice, easy, easy peasy thing to do. Where are my clients coming from? If you don't own this, by the way, if you don't know exactly where to find your clients from and own it, you're letting yourself down. You're not a salon owner. A salon owner has to supply clients for the salon. You are losing 20%. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you're Vidal Sassoon. He still loses clients. It's as simple as that. They just do. We lock them in. Remember, if I can turn this into 10%, I'm growing 10%. Think about it. It's the most easiest thing. You increase this by 10%. You drop this by 10%. You've grown 20%. What would 20% be like? Okay, question for you guys. Big question. Think about this. This time next year, this time, if you could stand here in time a year from now, what would you like your salon and your life to be like? It's a really good question because you need to think about this. This is my aha moment when I started this way back when. Think about how you want your salon to be, how you want you to be, how much money do you need, how much money do you desire to give you that life that you want. One year, 12 months from now, where do you want to be? Now, the biggest question, that's not the biggest question, by the way. The biggest question is what needs to happen in the next 12 months from you to get that to happen? It's as simple as that. Where you want to be in 12 months time, where you physically want to be, what do you want? How much money do you need? What life do you want to live? How many hours do you want to work? What has to happen in this next 12 months for you to get that reality? And that changed my life when I realized way back when what I had to do, what I had to stand up and be counted. I had to do this. Work hard, work hard, do it once, get it ready. And then after 12 months, it happens. Simple as that.
hey guys thanks for listening to me um give me some love share this if you can which is fantastic um this is tomorrow it's good friday tomorrow i'm having the weekend off this is my last day today i'm gonna try and do two days worth of work in one day if i can lots to do lots to organize Give us some love, guys. What did you think? Let me know. Uh, come on, give me some love. Shout out what you think. What did you think of that? Very simple. Do you reckon you can follow that? Do you reckon it's easy? <laughs> hey, Natasha, I'd love to think so. I'd love to think so. I've got some massive surprises coming. But but yeah, I mean, we have to do something. I don't have a magic pill. I don't have the silver bullet for you, Natasha. You have to do it yourself. It's as simple as that. You have to physically go ahead and do it. Um, Basic, basic, basic. It really is like just, just do the things. You've got to know why people are coming in. I remember 10 forms of advertising, okay? That's what I believe. You need 10 things that are going to bring people into your salon. Easy as if you do not have a steady stream uh, of people coming into your salon on a regular, regular basis, it's not going to happen. And, and the fact is, if you can increase this by 10%, literally, and keep this by 10%, you're going to grow your salon really with very, very small amount. And when it comes down to it, guys, it's crude. Money. Money is what keeps you going. And money is what keeps your business alive. It's what keeps you focused. It's what keeps you passionate. It's what keeps your staff. Because we all want to share the wealth. We do. We want to share it with everybody. I haven't met a hairdresser's owner yet. When I speak to them, when I first take them on, and I speak to them, and they get full of forming, every single one wants to pay their staff more money. They do. We're givers. The problem is we've got to take it first before we can give it out again. And when we take it, we've got to take it with love. We've got to give, 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 give. That's how it works. That's how we go. Simple as that. Hey, so much advice for a Thursday. Um, yeah, good start to the day. Simple as, by the way, this is coming in a different format pretty shortly when I start working my head going. Basic as, attract, keep, and wow them. Three basic things to remember. And if you look at your salon in this very small, right, we get confused with all this rubbish that we have to do and it's basic as you need to know how to attract them i've got a free marketing book which you can take steal do whatever you want if you want it just put down here and i'll send a link and you can go and grab it like you've got to learn how to attract these clients in your salon when they come in i think i said this last week when they come in you've got to deliver on what you promised okay simple as that you've got to deliver it and you've got to give them what they want. If you're charging $20 or £5 for a haircut, you don't have to be so fussy in this area. They don't expect a lot. They expect something. What you've got to do is build something what they expect for their salon. Simple as that. Good on you guys. Nice, short and sweet. Give me some love. Share it off. Bung it in all your groups. Let everyone hear the story that this is how to grow your business. Very basic. We all know this, don't we? Easy. Awesome, guys. Take care.